What's up? Here's another tutorial video. Like I said in the last video, we're going to hit DNS in this video. So we're going to add a DNS server over here. We're also going to add a switch connected up to router 8 here. Now the DNS server, if you don't know what DNS is, it maps um, like URLs, uh, names, maps names to IP addresses. So like we've been doing on all our hosts to verify connectivity to this web server, we've been just typing in the IP to the web server in the web browser. So that just goes through the routing and it'll hit our web server. But this is not how you normally do uh, websites. You'll, like when you go to Google, you type in www.google.com instead of like whatever their IP is, like 17 some shit dot whatever. So you need a server to tell your host what IP a certain name is at. So with this, we're going to name this uh, web server just test.com, by the way. So what this will do is when you type in www.test.com, it's going to consult with a DNS server to find an IP address which is mapped to the destination you're looking for. So we're going to have, since these computers are pulling from DHCP, so on router 6 and our DHCP server, we're going to have to define a DNS server under DHCP so that our, all of our hosts that are pulling from that will receive a correct DNS server address. And that's going to be over here, so when we verify connectivity from this host here, it's going to first go through the network, it's going to go to the DNS server address, and it's going to tell the host what IP that name sits at. So once it receives that traffic back, this host will then know to go to IP address 2.2.2.1. So that's the goal in this video. Now first I'm just going to mention a few things I kind of failed to mention in the last video. Um, I set up these networks and the DHCP server before I started that video. So what I did was I configured this interface fast ethernet 01 on both of these routers with the IP for their respective networks and I well actually I didn't because on these routers if you remember from the OSPF video we configured a network command of a catch-all so OSPF automatically grabbed the interface that I configured off both these routers and placed it in the OSPF process so these two networks I added were automatically propagated to all of our other OSPF routers. That's just a little tidbit. I'll probably put an annotation in the last video saying that as well, but I thought I'd cover it here again. But this time I'm going to go in and I'm going to just show you me adding the equipment. So we're going to throw a 2960 here off of router 8 and also a server which we are going to configure with the name DNS server. Now I've already defined a network that's going to be here, 10.10.4.0, and I'm just going to cable this up real fast. I'm going to use the auto cable from DNS server to the switch. That puts it on the first available port, fast ethernet 01, and from the switch to the router, which it automatically uses a straight through cable to fast ethernet 01 and fast ethernet 02 on the switch. So I'm just going to go into router 8 here, do a show run, just to make sure that we configured OSPF for a catch-all, and we did. We've got the network, all zeros, and all 255s in area zero. So whatever we configure off of fast ethernet zero ones automatically going to be added. We're just gonna do that real quick. IP address 10.10.4.254 with a slash 24 mask. Boom, and we're gonna shut that. We don't need to do the IP helper address here because we're gonna statically assign an IP to our DNS server. We don't plan on having any any host to pull from DHCP on this network. So as we can see, that's up. If we go to router five here, just do it do no well, yeah, show IP route. Then we'll already see that it's learning about this network through OSPF via 10.10.1.4, which is the IP of router eight on fast ethernet 00. So our network's being propagated correctly. Now to configure DNS, we're just going to go into the server here, same way we did DHCP, go to the DNS service and turn that on. And this name box is where we type in the name that we want to map to an IP. So we're going to just going to type in www. 
test.com and give that the IP address of 2.2.2.1 which is our web server and we'll add that so now this DNS server is set up to accept DNS requests and it's got an entry now we just have to set up DHCP to give hosts this DNS address so we're going to go into our IP DHCP pool on router 6 which we're going to go into the router 6 underscore network pool and we're going to give that a DNS server address of 10.10.4.1 which I just realized we forgot to put on our DNS server but that's going to be the IP of our DNS server and we're also going to go into the pool configured for router 7 and give that the DNS server address of 10.10.4.1 now the way we do it over here on our actual server is we're going to go into services uh, DHCP and we're going to click on our configured pools so 2.2.2.0 which isn't going to pull from this but we'll configure it anyway we're just going to put 10.10.4.1 in the DNS server box save and do the same for all other networks that we have configured off this server save so now DHCP is set to dish out DNS server addresses as well as default gateways and regular IP addresses but what we gotta do on our hosts since they're already their lease has not expired they haven't had to repull from DHCP so they've still got the old information in there so we're gonna swap it over to static and back to DHCP to pull the new information so you see now we've got DNS server of 10.10.4.1 and we're gonna have to do that on all of our hosts BAM oh shit well I fucked up there because we didn't configure DHCP for that host so I'll fix that later Go to these Alright, so now all of our hosts have pulled a DNS server from DHCP and we're going to configure the IP on the server just real quick 10.10.4.1 with the slash 24 subnet mask and a default gateway of 10.10.4.254 and DNS server doesn't need to know its own address but we're going to do that anyways so now if we go to the hosts and we go to our web browser and try to type in www.test.com it's going to consult with a DNS server it's going to tell it which IP this uh, URL sits at and we should get the web page pulled up boom there so it takes a little bit longer because what has to happen instead of we just typing in an IP here and it going straight to this router getting the route and going directly to the server instead now it has to resolve this name to an IP address by going to the server waiting for a reply to come back with the IP address and then go to the actual web server so it takes a little bit longer but this is what we gotta do if we want to type in fucking names for our web pages. We don't want to remember IP addresses for all our favorite websites. We don't want to know that Google has a certain IP and type that in every time we want to search. We just want to type in www.google.com. So this is how you set up DNS. There's also a few other options you can set. I haven't really dealt too much with this in Packet Tracer, but there's different DNS types. You got A records, C names, SOAs, and NS records. I'm not too studied up on DH or not DHCP uh, DNS, so can't really give examples for all these different types of records. Right now, we're only concerned with A records, which maps a single IP address to a name, and that's all you really need to know to set up DNS in Packet Tracer. Hope hope this was a good video for you. Hope you learned something. See you in the next video where we're gonna configure another web server.